Hi, this is Ed. I hope you all are having a good day today. Today, I have an encouraging message for those of you who are struggling with doubts or fears about different things. You know, we all have been in that place at, at times before, and, and some have that trouble more than others. Now, first off, I wanted to say that, you know, several of you have sent me messages to my inbox and I've tried to respond to you, but you have enabled contact lock, so I'm not able to respond to you. So if you want me to respond to you, you, you need to disable that contact lock or, or add me as a contact, and then that way I can respond to you. So uh, first of all, I want to say, you know, there's there's so much evil, as, as you well know, going on in the world today, and uh, one of the our enemy's greatest weapons he uses against us is fear and doubt. And there are many bad things happening all throughout the world today. There's, there's no doubt about that. But we, those of us who are children of God, those of us who are born again of the Spirit, we are not to live in fear. We are to live in faith at all times. And uh, some are also concerned about like going into prison camps or what what have you and uh you know once the new world order takes over everything and uh you know no doubt that will happen at some point but uh a few years ago this concerned me as well until this woman uh at a church I was attending at the time she gave me this word from the Lord. It's just one scripture, but I do believe the scripture she gave me was my answer to my question. I I don't know if I actually asked the Lord or I just was pondering it in my own mind. I was wondering, like, well, will the bride of Christ have to go through some of these things? I'm not talking about just regular trials and, and persecutions and what have you, but as far as the prison camps go, you know, I, I said, you know, of course, I don't fear whatever I have to go through, you know, to be found worthy of the Lord. If that, that's something that would be my lot, I would gladly accept it. But it did somewhat trouble me because I just know how horrible an environment it would be to be stuck in a place like that. And as you'll see after we read this scripture in, in the Psalms, it, it is a great comfort because I believe the Lord sh showed me through that scripture and, you know, that I would not have to go to a prison camp, but that the catching away would happen first. You know, and this woman also, she had never, to my knowledge, uh, given many scriptures like that, you know, words of knowledge or, or whatever you want to call them, a uh, personal word from the Lord. She, she had not done that. Uh, very often to others so and she she just picked me out and you know, she said the Lord had told her to give me this scripture and it was very encouraging as we shall see and uh, it's the scripture is Psalm 32 7 we'll look at that in a moment but first I want to read a passage in Luke chapter 12 verses 4 through 7 that encourages us not to be fearful And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are are of more value than many sparrows. We are not to fear man, because man, all man can do is kill the body. Man has no power over your soul. We are to fear God alone, because he has the power to cast one into heaven or into hell. And uh, he decides, based on the choices that we make in our lives, whether or not we will spend eternity in heaven or in hell. These two places are real. You know, there's, there's many preachers today that, that won't ever mention the word hell. 
And some of them just flat out deny that hell is a real place. It is real. You know, Jesus taught on hell quite a bit in the scriptures himself. So we must choose this day whom we shall serve because the time is soon coming where many will not have another opportunity. You know, once the tribulation begins, many will be killed in the early stages of the tribulation and then, of course, throughout as time goes on during this seven-year period of, of terrible trial coming upon the earth that has never happened before. So if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I invite you to ask him to come into your heart today. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you and to fill you with the Holy Spirit and to help you be ready for heaven and give you an inheritance into his marvelous kingdom of glory. Now I want to read Psalm 32, 7. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. You are my hiding place, it says. In his presence is fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. And Zephaniah 2, 3 says that the righteous and the humble may be hidden in the day of the Lord, which is the tribulation period. We can enter into his presence through prayer and worship and in his presence again we can have joy and peace in our hearts while we are waiting for the redemption of our bodies the great catching away of first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and 17 says you preserve me from trouble another word for trouble is tribulation and to preserve means to keep and the word from means out of. So therefore, what this is saying is the faithful will be kept from the tribulation. This is identical to what it says in Revelation 3.10. The promise to the faithful church says, I will keep you from, out of, the hour of trial coming upon all the earth. You surround me with... Some translations say songs, some say shouts. I like the Amplified version because it says both. It says, you surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Praise the Lord. The word shout also is in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, talking about the catching away. The Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, it says. So again... This uh, seems that this scripture here is it's not only a promise for deliverance from troubles, but it is also a pre-tribulation rapture scripture. This is very encouraging and exciting indeed. So I believe what the Lord has showed me through this scripture, and again, I was troubled at the time when this woman gave me the word, uh, that I might have to, you know, go to some prison camp or something uh, for some time, and meaning before the tribulation begins. But I do not believe that this will happen in, until after the tribulation has begun. And uh, so what I believe he has showed me is that uh, not to fear being put in a prison camp or to fear what man can do to us at, at all as well, uh, because... I believe the Lord is, is telling me and has spoken to me through this that the catching away will happen before the Christians are being rounded up. And I know in, in some countries they're, they're already being taken to prison and what have you, but that's, I'm talking about on a global scale. When it, when it starts happening globally, that's to me is, is going to be a tribulation event. And, uh, those left behind, however, do not have this assurance of not going to a prison camp because many will. And uh, many will die of, of various things. You know, some, some are appointed to go to prison. Some are appointed to die in war. 
Some are appointed to die through famine, through pestilence, through disasters, natural and man-made. There's, there's so many ways that people will die during the tribulation period. And also some are appointed to rapture, to the great catching away. But you must believe that there is a rapture. And you must believe that there is a pre-tribulation rapture. Because if you do not, you will be left behind. And because that is what you're believing for. The Lord has showed me this clearly. That those who believe that they will be go through the tribulation period, they will. Because that is what they're believing for. There, is, there are many scriptures that exhort us to watch. And if you, you say that the Lord cannot come until the end of the tribulation period, which he will at the second coming, but that's separate from the rapture. If you say that he cannot come till then for, for his bride, you cannot be watching. Because we can know from when the covenant with many of Daniel 9.27 is confirmed, that begins a seven-year tribulation. And you can count off the days until the second coming of the Lord. So you will know when that will be. Whereas in the rapture, you do not know the day or hour. So we are to keep watching at all times for the Lord. For in Rev Revelation 3, 3, the Lord says, If you do not watch, I will come to you as a thief, meaning that you will be left behind. So let us all continue to love one another, to abide in Christ, to repent as often as necessary of any sin in our lives, and to pr keep praying to be accounted as worthy to escape these terrible things which shall come upon the earth. And no doubt, however long we're left here, if the Lord tarries a, a while longer than some of us are expecting, we will have to go through some, some different trials and tribulations, if you will, but that's completely different from what's going to be happening during the tribulation hour itself. We're just in the birth pains right now. The tribulation has not yet begun. And cannot begin again until this covenant with many is confirmed. And that is implies many nations, not just between Israel and the Palestinians, as some are continually saying. That may be a forerunner to this true covenant, the covenant which is talked about in Daniel. So, again, stay watching, stay repenting of all sin, and keep looking up. For our Lord is indeed coming, and may we all be found to be faithful and worthy when he comes for his bride.